are going to move on to our Public Service Achievement Award. Tonight, we are presenting this award to a renowned businessman, an international businessman, uh, who has exceptional public, he's been an exceptional public servant as well in his homeland, and a generous humanitarian. His Excellency, Mohammed Abu Elinini. Over the course of his incredible career, His Excellency has advanced Egypt's relationships and cooperation efforts in Africa, in Europe, United States, and beyond. He has founded and led the Cleopatra Group, spearheading one of the largest investment companies in Egypt and expanding his nation's economic ties with more than 100 companies around the globe. He's held public office and continues to as member of the Egyptian People's Assembly, representing his community with pride and distinction and setting an example for others to follow. He has been a staunch ally to this organization, to the National Council of U.S. Arab Relations, as a member of one of our International Advisory Board. He provides invaluable support and extraordinary insights. He's uh, tons of commitment uh, for our educational mission. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the Public Servant Achievement Award to His Excellency Mohammed Abu El Inin in recognition of his public service and long-lasting leadership in Egypt. Bismillah. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It gives me a great pleasure to be with you all, of you, <coughs> and the National Council of U.S. Arab Relations as a celebration of the 40th anniversary. And I'm grateful and humble that you have chosen <clears throat> to recognize me with the National Council's Public Services Achievement Award as the, a member of Council International Advisory Committee. Indeed, I came here tonight, of course, that I'm very glad to meet all of my friends. But before to come here, I was thinking a lot how I can meet my friends and what I am going to talk. Of course, all of you are following what's going on, what's happening in Gaza, in West Bank, and also in Jerusalem. Everybody understand what's going on. Egypt, since day one, was declared in its committee. Because as much as I understand, even from the, the talk tonight, and also through the media, that the people is only talking about Gaza and Hamas, as the recent problem. And they try to forget the roots of the problem. The roots of the problem, as everybody knows, it is the border of 1967. It's a right of the Palestinian. It's a right of these people which stay in Gaza. These people which stay in Gaza are displaced from their places around Palestine, more than 70%. 
the people who are in Gaza are not from Gaza, but they are from around all Palestinians, but they are now in Gaza, and they are quite living in a very bad, miserable life, which we consider as a big jail. And what's happening for the past four or five years, the people forget the cause. Nobody talk about this Arabic-Israeli conflict. And this story, of course, we have been talking a lot, either here or in the European community, or worldwide with the media, but nobody listened. This is the result of these people which are staying in the jail. Of course, we are totally against killing civilian people, either from Israel or from Palestinian. Absolutely no. But what's happening now, that all the media worldwide start to talk about the importance of the situation. But my question now, do you have any hope for a good result for the peace process? Do you have any idea what's going to happen tomorrow? In a month, 14 has been killed from Palestinian people, 14,000. In a month, around 40,000 injured. In a month, 1.6 million displaced from north to south and there is another plan to be pushed more and this is a dangerous situation you have to understand that under all these things there is a very dangerous plan these plans will affect the security and stability in the area and I would be more precise to tell you who's, to these people which are thinking about Sinai, Sinai is a red line. It's not for negotiation. Sinai is an Egyptian border and we are well protected 100% and this is a decision of 100 million inhabitants in Egypt. The people who are thinking about this has to forget, because it's happened many trials, even with the President uh, Hosni Mubarak. Somebody talk, even Netanyahu, President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was telling him, okay, I have a map, and this is a map which we are talking about displacement of the Gaza to go in, in uh, around 24,000 uh, uh, kilometers in Sinai, President Mubarak. We told him, oh, forget, even to discuss, even to think. This decision is a decision of 100 million inhabitants in Egypt. These people which are thinking about this story has to forget. And now is only one way which supported worldwide that the right of the Palestinian was also the right of the Israeli people has to sit together and to start for a new plan. The plan, it is their land. The plan is to withdraw to the border in 19, uh, for 1967, June 1967. I think today, everybody's watching what's happening. Where we go, what's going to happen tomorrow? What is going to happen for next month? Other 30,000 injured, other, other, uh, other 14,000 to be killed? What's going to happen? And the people are complaining, talking, 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 and other countries are supplying with money and weapons also to kill the civil, civilian people. I'm here in America, the country of the principle the country of the human rights, the country of freedom, 
the country of the rights even for the animal and the plants. I think American and the American leader has to have an action, has to have an action immediately for ceasefire and to press Israel to do something immediately. Any American leaders will do something, he will be a historical champion that everybody will appreciate and respect. No winner. There is no winner after the war. Everybody are loser. Even if it is Israeli thinking to defeat Hamas, would never happen this, because after Hamas is another hundred Hamas. Because the principle is there. The right is there. The right of the Palestinian people, which is supported from worldwide people, from which everybody knows that this is their right. I think there is initiative happened in 2002, presented from 22 different countries. All the Ar 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 Arab, Ar Arab leaders have been presenting initiatives that we, uh, with, uh, with, with, with Israel, to, to Israel, only to withdraw to the border of 1967, and we are friend, we are neighbor, we can cooperate, we can, can live together, we can celebrate with everything together. But still, until now, they are refusing. I have been making, I attended some, some, some conference, and came some people from uh, Israel, and it was suggested by a Palestinian leader to say, okay, we are happy to have to, to, to be with Israel in one, one state or to have to, uh, in, in, to, to create two states. And the answer, no. Not even one state and no two states. Because Israel people believe to, when they withdraw, they give a present to the people. No. Is this not a present? This is the right. I think it's a time to think, to think with conscience, to think with the heart where we are going now. And I believe that we can make a great job for Palestinian and or Israeli people if there is a big support and if United States takes its rules. United States can do a lot of things. And I think Egypt and the President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has making a great job uh, lately and always, always Egypt interfering to, to stop and to make this fire and to, talk, to, to interfere between Hamas and Israel. But this time, it's out of question for everybody. I hope in near future, the people will understand that we are going to a most dangerous situation in the future unless the people start to say, stop, and let us talk. Let us go back to the table to discuss. Let us talk and to find a final solution together. I hope it's going to happen before to happen something more dangerous. Thank you very much. <laughs>